Good evening, Quinnipiac, and welcome to the Q30 Nightcast. I'm Tony Trahan. And I'm Taylor Popolars. Students at North Haven have to put up with putting it out. Cigarettes were banned on the North Haven campus last summer due to the health risks on a campus that focuses primarily on health sciences. But that ban does not apply to the Mount Carmel or York Hill campuses, although many find the amount of cigarette smoke unpleasant. Students have yet to push for a ban on Mount Carmel and York Hill campuses. Winnipeg University School of Law has a new face in the Dean's office. Jennifer Gerarda Brown has just been appointed as the new Dean of Law. Brown has taught in other prestige law schools, such as Georgetown and Harvard, but has been with Quinnipiac since 1994. Quinnipiac is looking forward to see what she will bring to the law school. Students can now dive into the Italian language because QU will now be offering it as a minor. Students will have to take 18 credits in the language, with at least two of the classes at a 300 level. Students must also receive a C or higher in all of their Italian classes with Italy having one of the 10 largest economies in the world, employers are on the lookout for students proficient in the language. Before, the university only offered a Spanish minor. And a recent report says Quinnipiac sends more than two dozen QU students to mental health facilities every semester. Our own Lisa Capabianco tells us how students are responding to this issue. My first reaction was to tell an RA or an RHD. I do my best to be there for them. I'm here to help. Like, don't be afraid to come and talk to me. That's how Quinnipiac students say they would react if one of their classmates struggled with a mental health issue. Student Services told the Chronicle that more students have been placed on medical leaves in the past few years for physical or mental health illnesses. According to the Chronicle, school officials say 25 students take a medical leave of absence every semester. It's scary how, how many, I think, people it's happening to and you can see worldwide and internationally how it's increasing and scary and I need I think we should do something about it. Quinnipiac has done something about this issue through its preemptive assessment team program. According to the Chronicle this program finds students who need help and sends them to the health center. For one QU freshman this program saved a friend who was suffering from depression. The school did make a difference in the way that they became they started reacting to stuff. Besides the PAT program, Quinnipiac offers classes to help faculty members understand students with mental health symptoms. But these classes are optional. I think it should be mandatory for faculty. The Quinnipiac Emergency Guide says some behaviors are considered to be warning signs, like changes in hygiene and appearance, disruptive behavior, or constant absences from class. You should be able to detect when, there's, when a student is really in need of help. Reporting for QNN, I'm Lisa Capobianco. Coming up on the news, QU students tell us how they were able to create a website just for Greek life. Also, the QU School of Medicine is accepting an unusual kind of donation. What it is, just ahead. And obesity rates are on the rise. Q30's Alyssa Meyer takes a look. These stories and more are on the way. You're watching Q30 News. We'll be right back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Q cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's.
Hello and welcome back to Q30 News. We're here with Mark Vandal and Jenna Kuhn. Hello guys, how are you doing? Good. Good. Okay, so I got a couple questions for you about your iGreekU. Um, can you tell me a little bit about what iGreekU actually is? Yeah, so iGreekU is going to be a private social media network for fraternities and sororities across the country. It's going to combine elements of already existing social media networks like Facebook, a little bit of Twitter, a little bit of LinkedIn, bring them all into one and into a space that's exclusive to Greek life across the country. And what we're basically looking to do is become that ultimate digital experience for Greek life. Mm -hmm. um, so how did you first get started with uh, this concept of iGreekU? We, there's a class in, it's a hybrid of the business school and journalism called the Mike Project class taught by David Tomchik and Brett Orzakowski. And what it is, is the goal is to create a digital business throughout the course of the class. And in the first couple of weeks, you do sort of a lot of mixer events to meet people in the class. And I got to meet Jenna, got to meet our three other business partners who have since graduated. And we all talked about how we want to solve these issues in Greek life about communicating, about networking about mm -hmm. getting the information out and meeting your brothers and sisters. And so we all shared this common interest and value and we all decided to join ourselves on a team and build this website. Mm -hmm. um, so as we all know, entrepreneurship can be a, a bit risky. So uh, what made uh, you guys decide to make your dream of iGreekU a reality? Sure, yeah, we feel very passionate about iGreekU and what it can do for, you know, not only Greek life members here at Quinnipiac, and in our chapters, but across the nation. So it's something that we really want to continue on and kind of carry through. Mm -hmm. Now, if iGreekU con uh, continues to be as successful it, as it has been, uh, where do you see iGreekU in the next year? In the next year, I can see it as spreading not only just to Quinnipiac or Boston University or Syracuse, but across the country to the south, to the west coast, to all those big schools, all the the huge Greek life schools such as Illinois that has 6,000 people in Greek life. Uh, we're hovering about 1,000 here at QU. Mm -hmm. But those schools using it, it being this really ultimate social media experience that all Greeks can come on and can use and get this experience that really can't be replicated anywhere else, that can't be used on Facebook, on Twitter, on anything like that, and being a successful business with really making a difference. Mm -hmm. um, so I understand you're Greek life members yourself. Uh, um, so do you think, do you truly believe that iGreekU can really better the Greek life community? Yes, definitely. Um, what we're missing sort of in the Greek life community is being able to come together on all different sorts of platforms. So being able to come together within our school and nationally. And iGreekU can do that for us. And I think it's going to be really great for communities to be able to come together at their school and then other schools connect as well. Now, if this website continues to gain the momentum that it has, could you guys see this potentially as a future career? Like, would you do this, dedicate your whole lives to iGreekU? Absolutely. Yeah. And even so far, even in the year since we first started back in February of last year, it's been an experience unlike any other. I would do this any day of the week over another type of job because it's really you feel your effort, your passion, your work being put into it, and you actually see the result. And you can look at the end of the day at this website and smile to yourself and say, wow, that's actually us. That's our thing. Mm -hmm. And to have a career where I can benefit something that I love so much, Greek life, and bring it to a national stage is just unbelievable. And I love it. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you guys so much for coming in Absolutely. and sharing about thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Taylor, back to you. Thanks, Tony. A sea of Greek letters has taken over Quinnipiac, and one more is being added to the bunch. QU has invited a seventh fraternity this spring, Delta Upsilon. Unlike the present chapters on campus, Delta Upsilon's events, meetings, and rituals are open to the public. The fraternity hopes to bring an alternative for students not interested in the traditional fraternity. Delta Upsilon won't be the last chapter added to Greek life, as Quinnipiac's ultimate goal is to add even more fraternities and sororities to bring down current chapter sizes. And the QU School of Medicine has launched a body donation program. The school will be accepting donated bodies to teach the new students for the upcoming fall semester. 
Once students finish studying a body, the school will pay for the donor's remains and return the ashes to the family. School officials say the new program is an affordable alternative for families in this tough economy. The medical school can hold up to 100 bodies. The results of a study on obesity and the cost of fast food shows some startling information. Alyssa Meyer has more on the story. Whether it's a large bell or those golden arches, fast food restaurants have become a part of people's routine, and it's growing more every day. The choice to have fast food numerous times a week is very common, but physician's assistant Sue Sanders says it comes with consequences. It's just so bad for your health. It depends on how much fast food you're eating, but you know, I, I have patients at my other practice who have it every day for lunch. Loaded with calories, fats, and cholesterol that lead to obesity, the question is why do people continue to go back to their favorite drive through McDonald's customer Brett Waller's reason for going back is because he just doesn't have time for anything else. I mean, I only do this because it's quick and easy on lunchtime, you know, for work, you know. Quick, easy, and cheap. Families who have a lower income cannot always afford healthier food options offered at places like Time and Season in Hamden. Store manager Leo DeRisi is concerned about the issue. It's hard to, like, figure out what to prioritize in your life if you want to be, like, because sometimes you just can't afford food that is like more expensive because it's like better for you which is kind of sad and like I think a problem that America has to like kind of like deal with on like a larger scale. Stores like Time and Season as well as major supermarkets have healthier food options that may be more expensive. However, fast food places are outnumbering them. On Dixwell Avenue alone there are only two supermarkets with healthier options compared to five fast food restaurants. Now a situation like this may cause higher obesity rates in the area. However, a recent study shows that that might not be the case. A study by the Archives of Internal Medicine shows that having better access to supermarkets does not improve diet for different income families. It is more targeting specific foods and shifting food costs that are effective. Xander has some helpful tips for buying healthier food at a reasonable price. Why not, when, it, when you go to the grocery store, choose the fruits and vegetables that are on sale at that time? So then, you know, you're veering it up. Do I think you should never eat fast food? No, but I, you know, it just shouldn't be an everyday occurrence. It can be, you know, healthy and keeping the bad foods you like and in moderation. That's, that's about it. In Hamden, Alyssa Meyer, Q30 News. Coming up after the break, a football player makes a not so graceful finish. That video is just ahead. Plus, she's got moves on a snowboard, and she's only one years old. And our own Jessica Simpson has, has the world news. Keep it tuned to Q30. We'll be right back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. You got two stories in a row next. How fast can you run a 40-yard dash? Probably not as fast as Syracuse's Shamarco Thomas. He runs an impressive 4.38 second yard dash time. His finish, however, wasn't as graceful as his run. At the end, he tripped over the finish line and face planted in a spectacular fashion. The face plant did not affect him too much since he managed to finish the rest of his drills. Whistle while you work or is it whistle while you walk? A Portland man has been ordered to walk while he whistles. The man is notorious for his loud whistling around town. The whistling is so loud that businesses complain that he drives customers away. The man has been cited with disorderly conduct and cannot stay in one place while he whistles. Now, she may be small, but her snowboarding skills on the slopes show that she isn't fooling around. You may be looking at the next X Games champion. Her name is Eden Grace Kovachu, and she is only one years old. Her mother took her to her first mountain when she was just six weeks old. In fact, she learned to snowboard before she could even walk. Eden also has a younger five-week-old sister, who her parents say will follow in her sister's footsteps as a snowboarding superstar. You know, I was terrible on the mountain when I snowboard. I've honestly never, 
laced up, if that's even what you call it, on a snowboard. Yeah. I've never skied. I used to sled, you know, every now and then. Sledding but is a good time. That's about it. But you know what I've been hearing? Across the world, while she's, you know, this one-year-old is having a great time down the slopes, there have been some insane floods. I believe in Thailand. In Thailand. And, you know, they, I've just heard some crazy things. So the type of flooding where, like, houses are getting lifted off their foundations kind of brings back memories of Hurricane Sandy back in October. Hopefully, you know, everyone mm -hmm. there is all right and doing well. But it's just, it's crazy weather. It's very strange to me that, you know, the world is experiencing all of this insane weather. It seems all within this, like, you know, 10-month period of time. I know. It's, it, it's absolutely devastating to have all this weather, like, such horrible weather just at once. It's unbelievable. But, but I believe our own Jessica Simpson can take us to world news yes. now. Thanks guys. While we've been dealing with record-setting blizzards here in the Northeast United States, torrential rain has damaged thousands of households in Thailand. Over 5,000 homes in a major rice-producing province of Thailand have been completely submerged in water, and authorities suggest that everyone in the area seek higher ground. These downpours are only going to continue, and several rivers have already overflown. Officials say that flooding is going to spread and over 36 villages are expected to be affected. Over in the Middle East, a Palestinian official suggests that President Obama should pressure Israelis to release some of their prisoners. They say if he plans on going through with his first trip to Israel as president next month, he should make sure things get more peaceful first. This request is in regards to a hunger strike of 4,500 Palestinian prisoners that took place in response to the death of a fellow inmate. Controversy has sparked over the cause of his death. Israelis say that it was a case of cardiac arrest, while Palestinians say he was subject to torture. Palestinian officials have called for an international investigation on the issue. And in Kenya, voters are heading to the polls next week. This will be, in, this will be the first election since their constitution was adopted in 2010. Their new voting system roughly models that of the United States, and they will also now have three separate branches of government. The people of Kenya have been able to see their candidates battle it out in two debates so far, and the response has been positive. Before the, next, before the election next week, Kenyan TV viewers can watch more debates from their candidates who will face questions regarding land reform and corruption. That's all we have for World News. I'm Jessica Simpson. Now back to the desk. Thank you, Jessica. So, Tony, I don't know about you, but this weather is really starting to get to me. I know. Today was just horrible. It was raining. Oh, it's miserable. And though, you know, all my friends know I'm kind of a weather freak and I love these mm -hmm. big snowstorms and whatnot, but the 40 inches we got was a little too much for me. And then to top it all off, we have, you know, this misting cold rain today. That's mm -hmm. probably my least favorite thing. I think one thing about the snow, though, is that it, it just won't go away. It really won't. If you go out on the quad, e we've had like three or four rainstorms, and mm -hmm. there's still like eight to ten inches of snow, and it's basically frozen solid. It's so been it's decent just weather, ice. above freezing oh. temperatures, it just won't go. It's crazy. And I'm pretty sure, you know, Groundhog Day was recently, and I'm pretty sure the Groundhog came out and said we were going to have an early spring, but I'm really not seeing how that can happen. It yeah. just, it, it, you know, it's blowing my mind. It's just, we, we're sitting here under all this snow. Our little town of Hamden gets the most mm -hmm. snow out of the entire East Coast, and now it's just miserable cold and rain, and it's just pretty disgusting. It's just bad conditions over here, but hopefully um, we'll turn it to weather now uh, with Matt here, and he'll hopefully show us some more about the weather coming this week. Thanks, guys. Behind me, we've got a live shot of our Mount Carmel campus. It's 43 and pretty wet outside right now. Will more rain be in our forecast? Will the creek actually overflow? That and more when we get back. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney, here at Ray and Mike's. Welcome back, Bobcats. As we look at our local temperatures, we can see 41 in Waterbury, 45 in New Haven, 42 up north towards Hartford, with 41 in stores. As we zoom out to our national map, we can see seasonable temperatures across the country, 63 in San Francisco, 42 down in Albuquerque, 35 in Kansas City, 58 in Atlanta with 71 down in Miami near the mouse, 47 up in New York City. As we look at our radar, we can see a lot of precipitation coming off the Ohio Valley, bringing it all up towards our southern New England. We're going to have a lot more rain tomorrow. Um, for the rest of the night, we can expect 36 with showers developing after midnight. The wind will be south at 8 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning when we wake up, we can expect 48 degrees. Showers still 
It's just not going to let up until the weekend. Wind is southwest at six miles per hour. Now, as we take a look at our seven day forecast, we can see more rain tomorrow, tapering off for a warm weekend with temperatures in the 40s. And as if we haven't had enough rain yet, we're watching for more precipitation coming in at the beginning of next week. That's all for weather. Now back to the desk. Thanks, Matt. Now, Taylor, did you happen to catch the Oscars this past Sunday? I actually did. This year I was very happy because I was able to watch the whole thing from a little bit of the red carpet all the way through to the end. Did mm -hmm. you? I actually unfortunately missed it, but oh. I did see some highlights. Oh, uh, did you see the biggest one of all? Mm, would that be Jennifer Lawrence tripping? That would be. You know, it was... <laughs> It was pretty shocking. You know, she had this gown on that looked like it was about six or eight feet long. And, mm -hmm. you know, God only knows how she was able to walk up those stairs in the first place. But she tripped a little, you know, fell a little bit. Luckily, didn't hurt herself. And she just popped right back up, went up, gave an amazing acceptance speech and just, you know. She killed it. She really killed it. And yeah. I think we have more information from our own Naliana Ferrero and Hannah Alabalea with our, enter or with our uh, entertainment. Ladies. Thanks, guys. So for the first story, we have Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, she was in the Oscars, and she actually tripped horribly. It was really embarrassing, but that didn't stop her from getting a standing ovation uh, at the end of her acceptance speech. Uh, Meryl Streep also won the Best Actress of the Year award last year, while Jennifer Lawrence took that title this year. And Honey Boo Boo has already stolen the hearts of millions of Americans, and now she plans to take her charm overseas. The reality show, Here Comes Honey Boo Boo, starring the pint-sized tween Alana Thompson and her family has now started airing overseas in several countries and is being received quite well. So this year's Academy Awards was on Sunday, February 24th. Jennifer Lawrence won Best Actress for her performance in Silver Linings Playbook. It's the first Oscar she has won. Jennifer Lawrence tripped up the stairs on her way to accepting the speech, but this didn't keep her from getting a standing ovation at the end of her acceptance speech. Meryl Streep won the Best Actress Award for her role in Iron Lady last year. Argo, the movie about six Americans being rescued from Iran, won Best Picture. And Twilight's Breaking Dawn Part 2 has been dubbed the Best of the Worst at this year's Razzie Awards. The Razzies celebrate the Best of the Worst in cinema each year. The finale to Twilight series went out with a bang, earning seven awards at the 33rd Annual Award Show. The winners of the uncoveted Razzies are based on emailed ballots from members. Also, Adam Sandler's That's My Boy won him another Razzie Award to add to his enormous collection. And that has been the entertainment update. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, ladies. So, Tony, I'm pretty sure you're aware, just as everyone else is on campus, that the sports buzz has been ringing pretty, pretty loudly. Mm -hmm. Were you able to attend the Yale game last week? Luckily, I snatched a ticket at the last second. So did I. It was great. Did you have a seat, or were you in the standing room you section? You know, unfortunately, with a crowd of over 4,000, I was stuck standing. Yeah, luckily, I would somehow wrapped up a seat in the second row, and it was, you're kidding. it was an amazing game. The energy was brilliant, and I think our own Nikki DiRico has more information for us, so we're going to throw it over to her. Nikki? Thanks, guys. After a weekend full of Yale games, how did Quinnipiac hold up? I've got the hockey hookup that'll make you want to stick around because sports is on next. I could really go for a Ray and Mike sub right now. Come to Ray and Mike's and try our Philly chicken with cheese for just over $4, giant cheesesteak subs, and mouth-watering boar's head sandwiches for as low as $4.75. Cue cash accepted just a mile down the road on Whitney here at Ray and Mike's. Good evening, Quinnipiac. This weekend was full of Bobcat pride, especially after SPD's Spirit Week events. The men's basketball team's six-game win streak has come to an end. Monday night, the team fell short to Central 67-65 against the Blue Devils. A dramatic and quick game left the Bobcats falling behind by six with just over five minutes remaining. Their perseverance shone through, taking the lead to 65-62 to with under a minute left but falling behind by a single basket in the end. And men's hockey is still number one. The Bobcats defeated number 13 Yale on Friday night at home. The TD Sports Center was booming after the team swept the Bulldogs and taking home the Heroes hat for the first time since 2010. 
Goalie Eric Hartzell stopped 30 of the 31 shots he faced, while the Bobcats took 35 shots on goal. The boys later tied Brown 3-3 on Saturday night at their senior game as they prepare for the playoffs. In women's ice hockey, top Yale as well, starting off their final weekend of the regular season with a 4-0 sweep on Friday night. Senior Victoria Viglante stopped all 12 shots on goal for her 24th career shutout and third this season, running her streak to eight games without allowing more than one goal. Women's hockey remains fifth in fifth place in the ECAC standings. I'm Nikki Drico, and that's all for sports. Thank you, Nikki. And you know, Tony, just as a closing note for the crazy Quinnipiac sports that's been occurring lately, I just want to give a shout out to all the ladies on our women's basketball team. They're currently supporting a 25-2 and two record, and they are Ooh. first place in the ECAC division. So they are absolutely killing it, especially one of their stars, our own crew member, Jasmine Martin. So great job, ladies. Well, let's hope they keep it up. But that'll do it for Q30 News tonight. If you would like to get involved in Q30 News, please visit our website at www.q30.org. And don't forget to visit our Facebook and Twitter pages. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next week with the latest in local and Quinnipiac news. Have a great night.